there is no middle ground on drinking and driving. It's just plain stupid, no matter how you slice it. And I will wager that the majority of those watching us right now have done it. Come on, you feel bad about it, or perhaps still subscribe to the belief that, hey, a few drinks won't bother me because I've mastered the art of driving drunk, something we all know to be insane at best. But now there is something else that is considered to be just as dangerous, perhaps even more so than drinking and driving, and it involves a piece of technology we just cannot learn to put down, even if it may cost us our life. Newsmax correspondent Miranda Kahn is here with another edition of Checks and Balances. Well, he Ed, here's the question for you. During the past 30 days, have you ever nodded off or fallen asleep, even just for a brief moment while driving? Well, if you answered yes, you're not alone. That's the question the Centers for Disease Control asked more than 90,000 participants in 10 states and Puerto Rico, and the results are an eye-opener to say the least. Here are the statistics. Out of the 33,000 deadly crashes that occur each year, the CDC reports 7,500 of those involve drowsy driving. That compares to the more than 10,000 deadly crashes that involve drinking and driving, a pretty small margin when you think about it. In other words, the CDC estimates 25% of all deadly crashes are a result of drowsy driving. It's an accelerated threat and it can have dangerous consequences. Take a look for yourself. Pulled out, didn't see a white truck entering the turn lane and I uh, hit him at like a 45 degree angle. It never really occurred to me that my judgment would be so impaired that I would actually get into an accident. And here's another example of an ambulance driver. We're going to go to that video. Of an ambulance driver. Actually, that's not the video, but we're going to go to it. This is actually a different video of the crash involving Tracy Morgan. But there was another example that I was going to show you of an ambulance driver who actually fell asleep while transporting a patient. You could actually see in the video him nodding off. There it is right here. You can see him actually nodding off. You see his head kind of bopping up and down. He's actually carrying a patient in the ambulance with him. He veers off to the left and then actually slammed the ambulance into a disabled vehicle. Now I want to show you another video if we can go to that. That's where you see a woman on a scooter. No, this is the Tracy Morgan video. We're going to go to that in a moment. Do we have the video? Do we have the video of the woman in the scooter? I think we're probably going to be out of time here for a second because we're coming down on a feature that we have to run. But let me just ask okay. you this very briefly. In yeah. 10 seconds, do you use your phone for texting while you drive? For texting? No. Do you do it either? I no. Mean, but we've I do, all done it. I we do all seem to. I do talk on the phone with a headset. Yes. I do do that. But I think, you know, what's really disturbing is that a lot of people are getting fewer and fewer hours of sleep. And really the key number here is anything less than five hours of sleep, you really shouldn't be behind the wheel. It is indeed. Miranda Khan, thank you so much for being with us today and bringing this report. Now something else to keep you healthy. Dr. Chauncey Crandall and today's Medical Minute right here on Newsmax. Hello, I'm back this week with this very important question. Is your doctor taking your blood pressure correctly? You may assume so, but a new study shows you may be wrong. According to this new research, doctors often cut corners when taking blood pressure and record readings that may be much too high. This is important information. First, if your blood pressure reading is wrong, you could be misdiagnosed with high blood pressure and put on powerful drugs for the rest of your life. You could also be denied health insurance and your job may even be put in jeopardy. This is important information, so pay close attention. Number one, is your doctor using the right size blood pressure cuff? Cuffs come in two different sizes, average and large, but too often only the average size cuff is even used, even on the person with a larger forearm. If the cuff is too tight, the reading will be too high. Number two, is your blood pressure taken in both of your arms? Doctors are taught that this is not mandatory, but it should be. Even a small difference between the two pressure readings can mean you are at great risk of suffering from a stroke or even dying of heart disease. And number three, is your blood pressure taken when you are seated on the examining table with your legs dangling in the air? If so, your reading may be 10 points too high. You should be seated in the chair with your feet on the floor and your legs apart and relaxed. Don't cross your legs at either the knees or the ankles. Remember, 
If your doctor doesn't take your blood pressure the correct way, you could be putting your health at risk. Many of you already have my book, The Simple Heart Cure. So if you do, you can read all about high blood pressure in Chapter 8. That's my health tip for this week. I'll see you next week with another important Heart Health Minute. Get your copy of Dr. Crandall's best-selling book, The Simple Heart Cure, for just $4.95 with this special offer. Go to www.simpleheartbook.com to get your copy today. That's simpleheartbook.com.